scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And leading captive silly women laden with sins, led away with various lusts, ever learning Bible studies on Sunday, prayer meeting in the night, self fellowship on monday miracle service on tuesday deliverance service on wednesday word exposition and encounter on thursday standing on the rock on friday sitting in heavenly places on saturday ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth now as janice and jambers withstood Moses so this also resist the truth amazing that in the church of God the truth is resisted men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no further this is the judgment of God upon these ones for their folly shall be manifest unto all men and theirs also was he said but thou hast fully known my doctrine this is paul speaking my manner of life my purpose my faith my long suffering my charity my patience hallelujah 11 persecutions afflictions which came unto me in antioch and all of that verse 12 yea and all that will live godly in christ shall suffer persecution and then 13 but evil men and seducers shall become worse and worse deceiving and being deceived let's read that verse together verse 13 one to read but evil men and seducers shall become what worse and worse deceiving people and they themselves being deceived but this is the encouragement to the true church 14 but continue thou in the things which thou has learned and thou hast been assured of knowing whom thou hast learned them 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus 16 he said for all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for reproof number three for correction number four for instruction in righteousness that the man of god the next verse may be what perfect the word perfect there is mature thoroughly furnished the purpose of scripture and the dealings of god with the saints is that he brings us to a point where we are mature established grounded built up in the knowledge of god the apostate church is that church that subtly begins to deviate from the doctrines and the principles of christ the bible says ask for the ancient parts and walk ye therein unfortunately what we call the ancient part is not what god calls the ancient part because what we call the ancient part is the traditions 
and religiosity of men and of denominations that also is an error and is part of the trait of the apostate church hallelujah are you listening to me tonight if you came here to be blessed if you came here to know the lord if you came here to shake out the things that caused the great to fall then welcome to this message tonight you must be able to open your spirit to receive for in receiving the word it will cause you to be established in truth hallelujah there are all kinds of apostasy in our church every kind of activity the bible makes us to understand the the next series that we're stepping into we will be examining the book of revelations hallelujah we're going to be opening up the book of revelations the word revelation comes from a latin word revelatio and the greek is apocalypsis that means the unveiling of that which has been previously hidden hallelujah it was a revelation of christ jesus as revealed to john a little bible history about john the bible makes us to understand that persecution arose when certain roman emperors began to strike against the church of christ and the first of them in bible history is called emperor nero he was a wicked and a hostile man hallelujah came to a point where they persecuted the church to a point that there was a field like a football field and they would parade believers and lose lions to chase them on account of their faith for the kingdom many were thrown into the den of lions many were dragged in carts hallelujah it was during that time that paul and peter paul was about to be crucified and bible history tells us that paul was about to be crucified the exact same way jesus was crucified and paul said he was not worthy he said they should turn him upside down and they turned him upside down and crucified him hallelujah and then after emperor nero one called domitio the next emperor he came in and paraded himself to be god and to be lord to a point that he even banished his wife and persecuted his children he wanted everybody to call him lord and god so when john the beloved the one who jesus loved when he began to preach about christ in the city of ephesus he began to talk about the counsel of god talk about the mysteries of the kingdom the divine life and the reality of the lordship of christ it was a real threat to the emperor hallelujah and then they caught john and paraded the people and they boiled hot oil and they threw john in it suddenly john entered the hot oil and nothing happened to him he moved freely through that hot oil and they were amazed what manner what dimension of the spirit what knowledge of god did this man have and as a result of that he was banished to the island that we call patmos revelations chapter one help us oh god to be the true church the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must surely come to pass and he had sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant john who bore witness of the word of god and of the testimony of jesus christ and all things that he saw and there is a blessing there for all those who read and obey the things that are written in revelations and john wrote to the seven churches i'm driving somewhere hallelujah now you must understand that the way the book of revelation was was um was broken he told him write the things that were the things that are and the things that shall happen after hallelujah the things that were was a revelation of all the things that had happened before the church age the things that are is a sum total of what we call the dispensation of the church age encapsulated prophetically in the seven letters that were written to the churches there were truly seven churches in asia minor 
all of the churches smyrna laodicea and all of pagamos all of those churches they were real churches that were planted by the apostles in asia but then prophetically every one of those churches was a representation and a type a dispensation of different ages in the church age are you following me now and so he began to write to the churches and you would hear the lord commend the churches i commend you over this and that and that however i have a problem hallelujah god had a burden because the church of christ although they were walking in grace although they were walking in power certain men began to come in orchestrated by satan himself and if they began to be injected into the system they talked like apostles moved like prophets prophesied like great men but paul said that these ones do not belong to us because their gospel and their message began to deviate the body of christ are you following me now this is one of the traits there are many doctrines hear me that many circles and ministries in this country are imbibing they teach it they write books about it these are erroneous doctrines that were sent from the pit of hell to deviate the focus of the church from the primary truth that it runs upon are you listening to me one of those doctrines was addressed to the first church in revelation chapter 2 and paul called it the doctrine of the laodiceans the laodiceans were a kind and a group of people that introduced a kind of doctrine another was called the doctrine of balaam different kinds of doctrines and let me tell you something the church of christ needs rapid emergency attention otherwise the way we are going to the church of christ has now become a psychological hospital where the power and the grace of god has been replaced by therapeutic psychological things so a brother can sleep with a lady and they say we need to examine the mental state and the kind of drugs and the the psychosomatic condition and all of the medical terms the apostate church we find justification for everything in the body one of the doctrines of the laodicean is where today we get the doctrine of what we know to be the doctrine of eternal salvation that once you are born again you can sleep in the name of jesus cheat in the name of jesus bribe in the name of jesus that whatever happens to your body does not affect your spirit your spirit is saved and many saints jump and we say hallelujah and many are queuing up and they will receive a rude shock when they find themselves in hell are you listening to me different kinds of gospels came one of it is called the doctrine of balaam there's no time but do you know balaam balaam was a prophet balaam was a true prophet balak called him and said he should curse the nation of israel and he repeatedly wanted to make attempts but the lord stopped him you know why because the nation of israel were a sanctified and a holy people and the shout of the king was in the midst of them and he had a strategy in the book of numbers the bible begins to reveal to us some of the things that he did he caused the nation of israel to begin to fornicate and sleep with other people are you getting blessed tonight i came to challenge you tonight and then for the men of god in this country we have a special let me show you something Jeremiah 23 I wish every pastor prophet 
bishop, pope, brother, whatever that names the name of Christ will sit and read this scripture. Are you ready? Let's read verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 9. Jeremiah 23, verse 9. Verse 1, and then we'll go to verse 9. Are you there? Want to read? Woe be unto who? Stop. Who is speaking? God is speaking through the prophet. He said, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture. Woe unto the pastors. That means there are pastors. There are men and women of God. They own parishes. They own churches. You watch them on TV. It says they destroy and they scatter the sheep. Verse 9. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. Now you must understand when the Bible talks of prophets, in ancient time there were no apostles. Are you listening to me? Why? Because Christ has not been risen. One of the biblical proof of an apostle is that he must encounter Jesus Christ face to face. So the apostolic ministry was also incorporated. And so the prophets functioned both in the apostolic and the prophetic office. They were the only ones who God could use. To communicate his counsel to the people the priest barely mediated between the god and the people in terms of sacrifice so when he talks about prophets there don't smile and say i was sleeping and i saw evangelist under my name you belong to that category and it's important to listen he said my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake i am like a drunken man and like a man whom with wine had overcome because of the lord and because of the words of his holiness this is the prophet speaking his reaction to the anger and the tenacity with which god was using to speak verse 10 for the land is full of adulterers for because of swearing the land mourneth, and pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their cause is evil and their force is not right it looks to me like nigeria for both prophet and priest are what? Profane. Both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness. Therefore their ways shall be unto them like slippery parts in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall into them. For I will bring evil upon them. Even the year of their judgment, said the Lord. 13. And I have seen falling the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal. Look up. They prophesy in the name of who? So not everybody that looks at you and says, You are Pastor Alpha. And you say, Yes, sir. The Bible says there are some prophets who prophesy. And there are many of them in this country. Deceiving the sheep of God. Promising you all kinds of things. I hope you are ready tonight. I like the way God deals with you. Sometimes he doesn't tell you how he will come. Then you receive it down and it keeps you down. Let's hurry up. I have also seen the prophets in Jerusalem. So he was listing prophets everywhere. The men of God in Zaria. The ones in Abuja. The ones in Port Harcourt, the ones in Wari, then the legion of them in Lagos, they are here. The Bible is talking about them. It said, An horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. There is no place like the church of Nigeria where we strengthen the hands of evildoers. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry can go anywhere loot from the national treasury enter our place and buy a jeep for the pastor suddenly he becomes the holy spirit in the church directing the affairs of men the bible said they strengthen a man comes and meets a man of god and says uh, i'm about to 
embark on a trip or do something prophesy to me let me tell you something do you know because you have an unction from the lord you can speak over people and bless the works of their hands and it will prosper but the lord will hold you accountable because with that gift came discernment to glorify christ alone hallelujah he says that none doth return from his wickedness and they are all of them like sodom and its inhabitants like gomorrah therefore thus saith the lord of hosts concerning the prophets behold i will feed them with wormwood and make their drink the water of god for from the prophets of jerusalem is profaneness gone forth in the land 16 we read to 19 and stop thus saith the lord of hosts hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you I hope you understand the context now it's talking about the false i like the way amplified puts it it says the false prophets he said don't mind the nonsense they are talking about doesn't matter how flamboyant it sounds he said they make you vain and they speak a vision in their own heart and not out of the mouth of god everybody stands on stage i was sleeping this morning and the lord woke me up and all, the bible says they conceived that vision in their heart whose god is their belly that vision was brewed from the hunger in their belly and not from the voice of god verse 17 they say still to those who despise me in other words it shall be well with you people who are obviously perverting truth because they drop prophets offering they buy you a suit they take you to hawaii and you say it shall be well a man is stealing another man's wife you know it you are aware it shall be well the apostate church hmm. the lord had said you shall have peace that's what they are saying and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their heart no evil shall come upon you is that not what a lot of people want that's what we want that's what we run to church for man of god i came with a small offering then the man says bless you i see the lord is showing me something oh glory 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 and now you begin to jump let me tell you why i'm teaching you this because the bible says it didn't say they will diminish they will keep increasing and if the church of christ is not built to be grounded then there is trouble for us in nigeria 18 for who had stood in the council of the lord and has perceived and heard his voice and had marked the word and heard it hallelujah let me tell you something verse 20 let's read on the anger of the lord shall not return until i have executed until he had performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly verse 21 everybody read it together one to read yet they ran i have not spoken to them yet they prophesy is that in your bible or you removed it this morning is there i have not sent them joshua selma ministries international i was sent by jehovah jire jehovah all kinds of things They say, my God and my king. He spoke to me this morning. He said, build me a people. And they are destroying the people. He said, I have not sent them. Yet they did what? They are not even walking. Boy, there are ministries running in this country. One year they have established 30 branches. Everybody is running. The same deceit. The same perversion. And God's people get ensnared. Gullible because Satan knows how to lure you. He uses your lust and your needs. To lure you into a trap. If Satan knows you don't like ladies. He will not bring a woman to you. What for? It doesn't work like that. He's smart enough to know that we respond to our needs. Hallelujah.
the apostate church some of you belong to these churches some of you have enjoyed the things that they do they have taught us a lot of error they have deceived a lot of God's people right now everything in the church of the living God is money money can do everything the front row is determined by how many money makers or partners your seed is equivalent to your faith let me with time I'll be showing you where these doctrines came from because God has been speaking to many of you and there are many of you that are just waiting to finish ABU so that you establish that kind of ministry you have planned it you have calculated it you have seen that it's 1.5 that will be your own every month you have you have drafted it and so you are crying they say fast and pray you will get power you are praying right now not because you love god it's part of the tools to add to the apostate church and i'm speaking to great men and women there's a lot of deviation from the truth of god's word and many of us have seen it we love it so much we like a congregation that comes to massage our evil doings and the house of god has been turned into a place of entertainment nothing wrong with joy in his presence there is fullness of joy not fullness of foolishness and stupidity hallelujah there are all kinds of nonsense that happen in the church there are football fans that sit in church seats kept for them arsenal fans man you they give offering according to everything they shout hallelujah according to their what what is going on in the body of christ how come we don't have a voice that can rise to speak we laugh at these things and it's misleading us there are men and women in the body of christ whose job is to match make the pastor's wife it is the one she sees and she says sam you are the head of worship uh zuera you always smile every time sam raises a song you must marry him any other thing is not the counsel of god now let me tell you something as you are laughing make sure the holy spirit is sinking this thing into your spirit because it's happening hallelujah we have all kinds of people the church of god has become a dome for people to look for contracts every tom dick and harry comes and tells the pastor he wants to sit down near this manager that comes and they say turn to your neighbor and say what do you do and the man of god let me tell you something judgment will come upon the house of god oh i assure you it will happen as surely as the lord lives that's why the church in this country has no voice politicians know where to run to for security they loot from the national treasury and know who to run to a prostitute comes to meet you you are praying for her you are seen in the spirit she's a prostitute why don't you call her in love and let her give her life to christ that will cost you what she's about to give you the prophetic seed The Bible tells us that a day will come. Listen to me. I want you to know that a day will come. Jesus Christ is coming upon this earth. And I don't know who has deceived you. But I'm reversing that deceit tonight. There is something called judgment day. There are two kinds of judgment for your information. Let me balance the nonsense preachers have tried to preach. Number one, there is the judgment that he who has not given his life to Christ is already condemned. Those ones will not make heaven. But there is the judgment that will judge the works of men. Are you listening to me? So that one is among those who are already believers. The word judgment should not scare you. It's bringing into accountability. Matthew 25. Don't open it. There's no time. But I'm showing you that there is such a thing. And the Bible says to those found worthy 
in the age to come they will be made to rule over kingdoms hallelujah we have taught all men all kinds of things you are the god of yourself bring out the giant within you you are one with christ i like you to say i am jesus everybody shouts i am jesus i like you to say i'm the galilean and they say i'm the galilean the doctrines that make the apostate church because this is exactly what satan did in ezekiel 28 he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god every time you sing a song and you say lord be magnified a lot of people say ah you're a new creation you should step into god push him he'll push you even when you do something that requires true remorse to have a contrite and a broken heart say there's no need feeling bad come on walk up to that touch your your redemption your redemption or whatever you touch and and smile back and so the leader of the choir is sleeping with every lady in the choir and touches his redemption back and smiles let me tell you something there is judgment that is coming upon the house of god yes there is and it's going to come and it will start with we the men of god and it will spread down do you realize that one of the talent that was collected was collected from one of the servants not an outcast many people's giftings ministries and many things will fade before you you will see it come in the days to come many prophets will arise as before suddenly they will see that the heavens have been closed for what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness your writing exam 100 level malpractice took you to 200 level you said glory i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus what is your concept of the sacrifice of jesus christ can i tell you something when a man of god stops preaching the things that he used to uphold he has started falling victim into that are you listening to me when a man of god cannot stand and preach holiness and righteousness the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation we want things from god we want prosperity we want money and so we have been taught that a shortcut to it is to tap into the anointing of the man of god's life and so what happens we just sit down we don't do anything right now there are prophets in abuja that collect what we call battle seed you pay and they labor for you in the place of prayer while you go about becoming the apostate church so they pray you pay them on payrolls the man of god has prayer band praying for him and he's there traveling around the world as if he's a tourist drinking juice changing every kind of thing trying all kinds of wine and then he comes his suit is fixed and he just flips through the scripture uh let's look at mark today he just shouts and for three hours of god's god giving time to his people stand there waste people's time you know how much i bought this suit you don't know you are not yet in that level and people laugh let me tell you something it's time you begin to frown at some things are you listening to me because many of us they have become mentors unto us we love them we admire them every time we see them you imagine yourself marrying them that imagination is certainly not from the cross of christ and there's need for radical re-editing many of us sit down and you already listen they teach we young people all kinds of things get rich quick do everything breakthrough can come for you in one week i see my car look i know what faith is i'm not telling you that there is no place for faith i teach about faith here don't i 
But I'm telling you, there is a straight line between faith and foolishness. Are you listening to me? God sends the man to carry his tithe and go and sow. And he uses from the tithe. And the remaining 20%, he comes and explains everything to you. He says, God is a merciful God. Just take this one and just use it and use malt. And with this effort you are doing, just use malt and wash your mouth. And say, ah, ah, my son, my son. You laugh over it. Right now, the poor in church don't have a voice. They are the ones who don't have faith. They are the ones who sit outside. Who is your father? Who is your mother? They are apostate church. We are laughing about it. Many of us are enjoying it. Many times, they begin to teach us demonic things. What they are teaching many people is what the Bible calls new age. New age. New age. They teach you all kinds of principles all in the name of the prophetic and many people truly begin to enter into the realm of the spirit and walk into all kinds of demonic things. Schools of prophecy where they gather people and pray and say now Aaron what did you see? You must tell us what you saw. And then everybody truly begins to see every kind of thing. And we use those things and pervert the body. And you look at somebody who is not called into the fivefold ministry and say, Steve, I see prophet in your name. From today henceforth, move in, the, in your might. And Steve is struggling because the grace is not there. And then you tell him to amplify his prophetic by bringing a seed for you. Now he brought the seed. How many of you have given seeds to fake people and you did not get the result? Everybody that blessed a true prophet of God in scripture received a prophet's reward. Many of our parents work hard only to come and vomit all the money in the presence of gullible and wicked prophets. By the end of the month, they are in your house. They came for a prophetic instruction. They gather everybody out. How come people cannot think in the church? A man of God looks at a lady and says, strip naked. Quickly, quickly, it's a prophetic instruction. And you see her hurrying up. Nonsense. The Bible lets us know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. Are you listening to me? A more sure word. It will not contradict the spirit of Christ. For the testimony, the testimony of Jesus is the true spirit, the motivation behind every prophetic word. Many believers right now do not have time for them and God. You know why? We are busy. Busy trying to look for money. Busy trying to look for husband and wife. Busy trying to look for jobs. Busy trying to do everything. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness. Those values are no longer preached. women of God celebrate it when people join queues and they are waiting for the anointing and you see people as if Jesus didn't die for them too for hours they are helpless waiting for the stepping in of the man of faith and power Joshua Selman I'm not saying don't respect men of God but why have you made them gods to your life hallelujah a man marries his wife the man of God will not let them flog out their issues and enjoy issues. Everything that happens, she will come to tell the man. The day she's pregnant, the man will know before her husband. Let the husband go and eat the baby. Where are we going? The apostate church. Intelligent men and women become brainwashed in the church. And we begin to do all kinds of things. The Lord must arise and help us. Are you listening to me? The people have come to a point where we love it so. We are not ready for growth. And any minister of the gospel that stands for this truth, unconsciously the seed has been planted and we begin to hate those people. 
I believe in new creation reality. I have been blessed. I believe it till death. I believe in the operation of faith. We talk to people and tell them nobody should die. When somebody dies, the church does not take responsibility. They say, go and bury the person. It's a shame to our church. We are the ones who live forever. And they leave the person sad, helpless. Going and he goes to meet his orthodox church that we always laugh at. And then they are the ones who conduct the funeral and laugh. But let that person's business blossom and you will see claiming of members. Sheep stealing in the name of church planting. Everybody. Everybody becomes a son. How come blind people are not spiritual sons to men of God? But they are in our churches. How come the ladies who are not fine are not submitting to the people? Everybody looks for the best, the choicest. And we yoke people with all kinds of demonic doctrines. Tonight there are two categories of people in this place. Those who will say and say this nudging in my spirit. It has been there is a cry of the spirit and those who will just laugh you want true prosperity you want true power there are many young people in this country that we have been taught that a process is as a result of lack of faith so we teach people that now faith is if your faith is working the jeep should come now and somebody in 200 level is converting jeeps angry he will not sit down and read his book. Just shouting because we have misled them. And a young man who has 50,000, that's all the money his poor parents gave him. He comes to school and we put them under pressure because he's the head of department. You must buy this suit with 45,000 to match our status. May God have mercy on his church. Some of you have been victims of what I'm saying to a point that you are now enjoying it. The man of God may not be fake, but it does not justify the principles he's using. Hallelujah. And the Lord brings us to help us know him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne many people right now every time you talk about bible study a time of building in the world people begin to frown but once you talk of breakthrough night a night of receiving and taking take yours people say yes this is the kind of thing i like encounter with the spirit of elijah then they'll put semicolon speed yes we like it everything that bypasses the process of greatness and can i tell you something many of our parents look at us although they are not filled with the holy ghost but heed some of the warnings they are giving they may say young man i may not know god oh, but i know this is not how he works Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel. When you come to reign, we do not have people who can stand for Christ and stand for truth. They say, if you cannot beat them, do what? Many of you are hoping to finish school now and run to Abuja. Your blood is already hot. Final year project. Hi, God, let me finish this thing. See, I will shake the country. So every time they are saying you are blessed, in your mind, what you are thinking is, let me go and invade everything.
can someone walk up to you and drop five million naira over the integrity of your faith can you look at it without praying about it and say no i love god more than this don't be too quick to smile and nod your head because many generals who have fallen gullible were this confident are you listening to me where a man will steal another woman's wife and come to meet you and say pastor bless us uh, as a token of my appreciation i have one small one you are not doing introduction you're a man of god and so you tell them i love you but this is the position of the word of god and i will not compromise it may cost you your fame it may cost you your reputation you may not belong momentarily notice what i'm saying there are many of you right now on account of your faith people have called you stupid because you are doing the things that god wants you to do that guy wanted to go out with you and he was so rich but you went to the lord and god said no way and your friends insulted you they say you you are the most stupid lady we know in this day and age can't you collect his money and go what is there about him sleeping with you but then you stand for truth can i tell you something there is a name that god is called he's called the lord of sabaoth and he's about to step in and prove those who truly love him can i tell you what the lord showed me one time i shared it that the works of men were like heaps hallelujah somebody told me about it and then i forgot about it one day when the lord showed me it surprised me many men came to stand and their works just like wheat in the harvest and fire just passed it and then you just see something little left that's the real thing that they are doing for the kingdom can i tell you something you can live and be a billionaire in this life you can live and be an influential person you can have a church membership of two billion people but it is only the degree to which you walk consistently with god that will make sense in the realm of the spirit are you listening to me so many of you who have been taught that god's way is just to make you a millionaire overnight calm down there is something called a process sow your seeds today build your life today many who cannot stay with the holy spirit you can't study for five minutes because you have been taught that you need to hurry up there is no hurry in this life you know why i'm saying that because those that have been moving according to god's pattern will turn and find out that they are ahead of those who have been deceiving them there are many churches and ministries you are seeing today the day their harvest begins to come it will shock you because they are laboring bearing root downwards there are many men of god you hear today i remember years ago years ago abu has changed years ago you see a man of god small grace you touch one sister and she falls you see one pa one pa one this one that i remember those times i used to be quiet and i would lock myself somewhere i was walking in the anointing walking in grace encounters with jesus but i knew the bible says john remained in the wilderness until the time of his appearing many people came with visions and prophecies josh we saw you in a tv station pfn remember pfn said they wanted to give us room to start eni in one of their branches all those things look like expansion in ministry but i knew that was not the season of appearing are you listening to me many of us have short-circuited 
our dealings and our trainings with the Lord because we have been taught a false doctrine, a false gospel. When God is dealing with you and he has not finished, you jump classes in the spirit. Now you come and establish a big ministry and those lessons you would have learned from the classes you jumped will bring you back and retrogress you in ministry even at the height of it. Every young man who can wear suit they just call him and say kneel down pour oil on him and say stand up i saw the gift of the spirit on you you are a, you're a pastor you are an apostle and now this guy just got born again six months ago and they say forget the harvest is why the babylon in him has not finished dying now he stands on stage and he sees lara very pretty lady and the old man Cain. Is attempting to resurrect when Abel is preaching and that guy is struggling on stage he's laughing then he says come into my office and tomorrow you hear that something happens and people will say how far Moses stayed 40 years in the wilderness let me tell you something friends we must return to the order and the patterns of the spirit if we want to last and be great a lot of people do not go through the dealings of God suddenly one breakthrough comes they step into prosperity and they become fools the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them because they do not know the purpose of the blessings they were not taught are you listening to me tonight God is searching our hearts because he wants us not to be the apostate church there is a church like that in Nigeria I don't mean a denomination i mean a group of people parading all kinds of beliefs the church is becoming a psychological thing right now you go to churches and you see the the drawing of anatomy and they're explaining every kind of thing your subconscious mind your inner conscious mind the other one that is there where you are hot information goes through this place what is your university for And then the man laughs and says, Ah, so this is the side of me that makes me like women. So it's not even bad. Hallelujah. And we try to teach people principles of metaphysics and Christian science. Mind reading. A prophet just comes and says, Come Josiah. And Josiah comes. He said, now everybody watch. Wave his hand and Josiah goes blind. And people say, wow. That is certainly not the spirit of Christ. Because among all the things that God gave man dominion over, man was not mentioned. Are you listening to me? So that we tread the path of destiny with care knowing the word of God herbalists have found out that they are running out of markets and they now have left their their herbal joints and one suit and say if you will not come to us we are coming there is a mountain in Abuja I think Manasseh will tell you when you go there they give you stones and you throw if by any means your stone does not hit the tree that you are trying to throw, you will know what brought you there. So you want to marry or you want this. They bring it. And, and you throw. And if he hits it, you will rejoice. A man of God says in the name of prophetic instruction, bring the photo of the lady or the guy you want to marry or the kind of job you want. They say bring it. Now there is a place for that. But this is where the boundary crosses. They say now, put your seed upon it and bring it. Put candle on top. Go around it seven times. Do all of this. Is that not what native doctors are doing? I don't care who is doing it. There is a name. It's called witchcraft and manipulation. That's exactly what is going on. And many men of God are already building cabals. There is the cabal of the prosperous ones. There's the cabal of the handsome young men of God. There is their group. 
They are the ones who can shake ladies. When it's time to pray in tongues, they come and stand and do all kinds of nonsense. Tonight's message is ringing a bell in your spirit. We are going to pray. We have to be out of here. So, the apostate church. And there is a warning. It says that if you do not stay and you take on these doctrines, many churches have now become business centers. Different kinds of anointing oils, different kinds of breakthrough handkerchiefs, different kind of prophet's mantle. They line them before you while service is going on. And they tell everybody, just come according to your needs. But I know in my Bible that there was a time that a particular sorcerer, a man wanted to buy power from Peter. And he said, thy money perish. I'm not saying don't buy tapes. Don't buy anointing oil. But if your purpose, I went somewhere and the man was marketing books. And he says that if you don't buy this book, something will happen to the people after three days. And you need to see the believers. Intelligent people, some doctors, everybody rushing. Why can't you just say, this is my work. I have labored. And you can honor me and honor what God is doing. Is that not honest enough? What is wrong with saying, Koinonia, um, if you consider me to be a servant of God, bless me. Come and stand and twist truth. The Bible says, handling the word of truth rightly. Men of God have gone to the extent of receiving all kinds of powers. There was a case in Kaduna. I'm sure some of you heard about it. The man of God that had a special anointing oil that he will rub on himself as he's stepping into the church. Come and see power, everybody falling. Because the Greeks seek for a sign. Hallelujah. And one day, he forgot to put the oil. And then when he came, he told his assistant to quickly run and check somewhere up and bring the oil. And it so happened because of morning service. The assistant pastor didn't take his bath. He would bath later on. And his body was white. He said, Kai, let me just quickly, this kind of embarrassment. And the guy just rubbed the oil. Small. As soon as the assistant entered, the power of God began to break out. And the Jew said, you touch that oil, Abby. Not fiction. Not fiction. To the point that the church of Christ cannot even know the difference between a true man of God and a false man of God. A right spirit and a wrong spirit. Anything God cannot give me, I cannot get from anybody. Anywhere he cannot take me, I cannot go. You must come to a point. The, the higher you go in the spirit, the more dependent you are on him and his word. He said, I love your word more than my necessary food. We must train a word carrying church. Hallelujah. Job said, All the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. For your honesty in your job place, you have not been promoted. Wait. There will be the time of appearing. Let me tell you when God promotes you, no man can demote you. When a man promotes you, you will need him to keep taking you higher. But when the king of glory, the one who watches over his word to perform it, lifts you, you are lifted forever. There is a relationship between praying in tongues, staying seriously with God's word, diligence, a life of purity and holiness, and the anointing of the spirit. When you see a man moving in the anointing and you do not see these traits, something is wrong. There is no guesswork about the anointing. There is no guesswork about the word of God. Are you getting blessed tonight? The apostate church. Tonight, many of us need to deliver ourselves from religiosity and traditions of men.
that stop us from stepping in when we begin to examine the book of revelation we'll talk about the seven churches and we'll examine everything that the lord forbade in their lives but tonight my call is that judgment is coming upon the body there is judgment that will come upon the body and many churches will be affected many bishops will be affected many men of god will be affected many apostles many prophets will be affected not because god is a wicked god because the people of god have been perverted from the ways of god it's time for everyone to get up and know god for real know his ways let the word of god not just become an instrument of devotion for you in the morning they are life to those who find them it must become your life that you say if i perish i perish faith in the operation of god's word if god has said you are blessed you are blessed if god has said you are lifted you are lifted it doesn't matter what abu tells you it doesn't matter what your parents tell you his anointing is upon your life you may not look like it but the word of god tells you you stop running from pillar to post looking for endorsements the word has endorsed you it has called you the head and not the tail above and not beneath we need a generation of men and women who when they come to bribe you you will say no no bribery no corruption where if god takes you to a place of government you will stand for truth you will stand for justice you will stand for equity at every cost job said though he slay me yet will i praise him no bribery that you are seeing you are in the exam hall no malpractice you know that you can copy and get an a and it will shift you from two two to two one and you say no i love the lord not it does not matter my spirit is seated with christ my body is seated in hell hallelujah where you believe the lord where you stand for what is true the values of the kingdom the church has become a secular place any Tom, Dick and Harry that produces any album just jumps on your stage. And because we are looking for fame, we don't know the difference between Zion and Babylon again. The sacredness and the purity of the word of God and the songs of the spirit. And by the way, let me correct what you are saying. Many of you say, hey, he's talking about rappers. I love rappers. That are born again spirit filled people so let your religion not even think is what i'm talking about i'm not just talking of those singing him i'm talking of those who are truly born again filled with the holy spirit that christ has become the center of their lives that whether through raps through music whatever they know that they are not just musicians and guest artists using the church as a ladder to climb to greatness but that they love god for real that when they come out to minister i was listening to a, an interview by frank edwards i love him so much they say how do you write your songs he said i don't write my songs i spend time in the spirit and i receive them right now everybody wants to get money you just sit down and conjure one album Jesus, 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 you're my Lord, you're my Lord, Jesus, Jesus, and no life, death, standing and shaking itself in the church, and people are just nodding, they are just enjoying it, no life. No life. The person finishes his song and runs outside, and is laughing, he's saying, man, you should give me my honorarium, or let me leave, I have another meeting somewhere. And he said, you must give me my money in this place so we'll drag this thing. Many of you are seated here. 
you are musicians you are music ministers the reason why god has not lifted you is because you have not listened to this message until he flogs out flesh and babylon in you then the glory will begin to come by itself we want a set see let me tell you why i shout and i say these things because now i have access to you tomorrow i may not have access to you you'll be too busy so i kill it and bring it as hot as it is so that you can listen it can sink into your spirit you may not like me but tomorrow you will bless me you will put my children in your school because you are happy your responsibility will make you a blessed man there is nobody who laughs during training it's only in the church people laugh during training they are happy they say you are lifting weight you want to compete with the whole world you are smiling no go and watch the olympic people for the place of training is a place of sacrifice sister i know you are pretty but permit me to flog out babylon flog it out so that your beauty can be as gold my brother i know you are nice let me flog it out by the time i do that let me tell you something you will stand strong god can make you the entrepreneur you will be the next or ten dollars and the rest but then you will be a strong person this time around you will be able to stand and tell the world and say i love jesus christ next time some of you will be the bishops and you will remember you will not be some of the bishops we have in this country with all due respect you will know the difference between god and man if this is my only assignment on earth i am happy and i will do it honorably necessity is laid on me and the word burns in my spirit like fire and i must bring it out as it is come out from among them and be ye separate come out the language tonight is come out from among them be ye separate don't adopt those philosophies i'm not teaching you to be critical that every time you go to a church you are just trying to watch the mistakes of the man of god no 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 god does not use perfect people his glory unwraps them and then brings them to a place of grace where they are dependent on his grace However, there are some things that are not mistakes. It's called apostasy. The perversion of truth. Be careful the kind of men and women of God you allow to climb your stage. Men of God, be careful the kinds of meetings you allow. Now I'm not, this is, I don't go for any kind of ministration. Call it pride, call it whatever. People just come and meet you and through a phone, they say there's a meeting. Seven men of God are coming want you to come and honor them the next thing you see your face in the middle of witches and wizards they use your presence to endorse evil so when people see you they say ah if joshua selman can be here that means these people are nice then after the meeting the people say ah i'm that joshua selman's friend come and meet me at home and they say yes sir the same respect that's what has been happening in a lot of churches a lot of things because of honorarium everything you just go because we are afraid of our reputation you don't scrutinize and question and make sure that everything is lined up in obedience to christ hallelujah thank you jesus this teaching will make you strong this teaching will make you great i tell you the truth it may not mean anything to you right now but i assure you in the days to come it will separate you it will bring you grace listen to what i am telling you it will bless you i will not teach you what will destroy you this may be a hard teaching but can i tell you something hear the voice of the lord tonight one day you will know that a preacher was shouting truth into your spirit your spirit bears witness as painful as it is your spirit tells you i'm not lying to you i will tell you what many men of god will not tell you 
that's why we respect God in this place we know the boundaries of offerings we know the boundaries of character we know the boundaries of everything it's supposed to model to you something we may not be the best of people but we are certainly not the worst and I hope that you see a desire to love God can your life be true can you be a replica of the true Jesus life can the anointing come upon you and the glory of God will still beautify you can God make you a millionaire and a billionaire and his kingdom will still be advanced can God make you an influential person in the government can God give you the anointing the power you want the fame the influence the charisma can God take you to the nations and still find your heart oh Lord I want to know your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise fill this temple Lord, with your spirit once again oh Lord we want to know your glory we want to be the true church we want to offer the sacrifice. Would you fill this temple, Lord? Fill this vessel, Lord, with your spirit once again. These are the kind of people that will step into prosperity. These are the kind of people who will step into charisma. The Lord told me something. I've said it here. That son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord told me. He said, if you let men see me. He said, if I be lifted up, not Joshua Selman, not Koinonia. Don't make Koinonia an idol. Don't make Ian an idol. Don't make Joshua Selman an idol. Or any of the ministers who are only ushers. Pointing you to the king of kings. Like John the Baptist, we are the voice of that word that cries. We are preparing and making straight his way. If you come for Koinonia and all you end up doing is respecting Joshua Selman alone. And loving him above God. We have succeeded in manipulating you into witchcraft and idolatry and god will judge us for it we must lead you to the king of kings the one who is above all that all of us will stand before him it's our job to ensure that you are successful in this life that's why we teach you on wealth we teach you on prosperity we teach you on faith we teach you on the principles of success is our goal that you become men and women of character that's why we teach you on the fruit of the spirit we teach you on the anointing we want you to move and operate in the miraculous and the supernatural that you be thoroughly grounded and established in truth do not be unaware of the devil's devices we are going to pray and cry our heart to the lord and say lord deliver the church in nigeria and set us apart you're going to pray for your pastor you're going to pray for your man of God, your bishops. We are going to raise a cry. You will pray for we the leaders and say, Lord, keep them. Keep them. That 10 years from now, we will still be preaching this truth that we are preaching. And not allow jeeps and trips abroad. And millions and billions rise up on your feet. We are praying. Inside and outside, begin to pray. Pray and say, Lord, I come out from among them. I come out from among them in business, 
in ministry pray in governance i come out from among them i refuse to be part of the babylon generation i refuse to be part of the apostate church that church that perverts truth whose god is their belly i'm driven by your passion alone i'm driven by your passion my heart pants for you in a dry and weary land i love you more than ministry i love you more than life itself pray say lord i love you more than success more than titles more than cgpa more than anointing more than marriage more than relationship lord you have won my heart there's no going back in life and in death you have won my heart go ahead and pray those of you in ministry pray i refuse to teach lies i refuse to deceive god's people i spend time with the word i spend time in prayer i get the rema word of god i stand for truth i stand for righteousness i stand for grace that the anointing of the spirit that the prosperity of heaven that the blessings of god will find expression pray we are praying tonight we come out from among them we will not bow to bear we will not mix fresh and salt water we receive grace 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 to be generous in thee grace to be generous in thee Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray for yourself. And say, Lord, I dedicate my giftings, my skill, my ability to serve only you. Whether you are a musician, whether you are a celebrity, you are a five-pointer. Open your mouth. Say it. Don't look at me. Pray. Say, Lord, from today, I will never use my giftings, my anointing, my ability to serve Satan, no matter what it will cost me, no matter what it will cost me, in business, in ministry, in your family life, pray, I live for Jesus, I serve him alone, I serve him alone, no compromise. Everything that is not of God, Lord, take it away from me. Whatever, any fame, any prosperity, anything that is not of God, any association, take it away. Let only Christ be glorified. Any marriage, any relationship, any friends, associations, groups, sects. I love you more than silver or gold. I mean it. I mean it when I love you. Hallelujah. God is raising the end time army of real Christians. And that's our job. 
Finally, we are going to pray for the church in Nigeria. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your man of God. Pray for me. Pray for all the leaders. Say, Lord, keep them. Those who are already in apostasy, don't condemn them. But say, Lord, deliver them. Let light shine out of darkness. Come on, pray. Lord, we pray for your servants. Let light shine out of darkness. Every man of God, every church worker, Lord, we pray in Zaria, in Kaduna, in the north, in Nigeria. Lord, we pray redeem their soul from the deceit of Babylon. Redeem their soul in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We pray for every church in Zaria. Lord, that they will stand for truth. We pray for the men of God. Money will not take their attention from you. Fame, power, charisma will not take your Lord step in in your mercy step in in your mercy and redeem our ministers redeem our businessmen redeem those in authority redeem our bishops our apostles our pastors our leaders that Christ alone will be Lord. That we will love you above and beyond the things that you give us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I was coming in from Abuja this evening and while I was coming I was just talking with the driver only two of us and something happened a car just came nothing was wrong brake did not fail nothing happened this car just came to hit us and then it moved in front of us and rode right into a ditch i watched it it moved right into a ditch i just stretched my hands and i said lord mercy mercy that was all i was saying how that it happened nobody died in that car not even a scratch but i looked and the driver told me he said i've never seen a very strange guy like that and he was speaking to me a different person i took him from abuja and he was telling me he said shortly before this car came suddenly he had a vision just in a split second like an accident and then i told him i said there are some people that are too jealous in the hands of god god would rather a nation die for their sake this is the true basis of immunity in the kingdom not this i shall not die thing no there is how you can be so useful to god that God will swear by himself to defend you. Hallelujah. And while I prayed this morning, the Lord gave me a prophetic word to announce to the house. I never speak a thing until God tells me. The Lord told me something. He said, son, for half of this year, you have seen great grace. He said, tell the people to brace up for glory. Tell the people to brace up for glory you will see things that will happen in the next few weeks that will shock you will cause your ears to tingle if i be a servant of god and if i be called by god i prophesy this into your life and i declare 
that you will see it happen in your life you will see it happen in your family you will see it happen in your ministry the lord told me to declare that is a season beginning from this eight month an unprecedented level of glory of increase you will see prosperity like never before you will see expansion as a ministry as individuals in your businesses in your life in your academics i tell you the truth and i lie not the lord god of israel will confirm this in your life it's a season of glory that's what god told us at the beginning of this year he said great grace i'm not the kind of preacher that just sits down and laughs on the 31st and guesses what god is saying no it's in the bowels of much prayer and staying with the spirit if god does not tell me anything i have no business announcing things but let me tell you something you will see glory that will shock you i say this write it mark it if it does not happen i am not called of god the lord spoke to me this morning he said you have endured the season of great grace tell the people to brace up for glory brace up for glory you have trusted god you have enlarged your capacity we pray 21 days praying and fasting you have had the word i tell you prepare write it write it you will see it with your eyes shocking things will happen in this koinonia levels of grace you will hear men talk about it outside some will criticize it and say it's not of god some will say this kind of prosperity this increase cannot be from god but let it be that god declared it before the time lord we give you praise tonight we thank you for your grace we choose to be the true church deliver us all oh god from any form of apostasy let us be the true church oh i declare glory i hear it again in my spirit tell them it's a season of glory increase prosperity blessings restoration enlargement that's what the lord tells me to declare and i declare it as he speaks it into my spirit lord you will hasten your word to perform it and our eyes shall see and we will give you thanks hallelujah you're worshiping with us for the first time thank you so much for coming please quickly we're out of time we want to close so everyone can go home please leave your seat and just walk out here you are special inside and outside we appreciate you we celebrate you please clap for them as they come thank you thank you so much thank you for coming appreciate them as they are coming please find your way to the front don't be shy don't be ashamed inside and outside ushers help them ushers help them direct them keep clapping they are still coming hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.